Sherrod Blakely, Celtics insider along here. And we have a deal, Sherrod. Celtics making a move. Let's go over it for our audience here. Uh, they acquired Juancho Hernan Gomez from the Grizzlies. He didn't play a second for the Grizzlies. He was with Minnesota last year. Uh, for Chris Dunn, who didn't play a second for the Celtics uh, as well. So these guys have been traded twice, and uh, they never played for that kind of mid-stop. And goodbye, Carson Edwards. There might be some people out there who are sad about this. Yeah, shed a tear. Uh, there were a lot of high hopes when Carson was drafted, might have been a steal. We'll get into all of that. But first, just your initial thoughts on this deal. Uh, does it make the Celtics any better? Does it move the needle at all? Well, it, to me, the, what the Celtics are doing is, is they're building a team that if they're going to be successful, they are going to they're going to be the slow drip, death by cuts type of team where they don't have a great two or three guys, they're going to beat you with nine or 10 guys that are going to slowly but surely chip away at you, jab you, poke you, and just slowly beat you that way. That's their, to me, that's their pathway to success. Adding uh, Hernan Gomez at this point, to me, uh, looking at his game, looking at his numbers, he's somewhere between, he's a stretch big, but he's somewhere between Kelly Olenek and Daniel Tice. And, and I say that because he, I think, is a little bit more of a physical rebounding type than Kelly, but doesn't shoot nearly with that type of volume. And right. as far as Daniel, I think, is more of a low post threat, but I think Hernan Gomez gives you more of a perimeter option. And if you're looking at the Celtics team, the type of lineups that they're going to roll out there, at some point, they're going to play teams that are going to go ridiculously small. And he's perfectly suited in those situations, being a 6'9 guy, 6'11 wingspan, shoots in the low to mid 30s from three point range which means when he's on the floor you got to respect that right so again and i think it's just you basically traded two guys that were bubble guys are really not going to play uh for the celtics so i think that makes sense uh doing this at the end of the day though you I don't expect a huge impact here, or maybe you do. Do you think that this is a guy who theoretically could crack a rotation, or are we talking someone who's on the 10 to 12 end of the bench uh, and might sneak in for some minutes? I think he's going to get very sporadic minutes. Uh, I, I don't think that what he brings to the table is necessarily going to move the needle. But the thing about the Celtics, they're trying to get a deeper roster than we've seen in the past. Guys that have the type of skills that could potentially help you. It would not surprise me if he had a five, six, seven, eight game stretch where he was in the rotation and they played, you know, a, a bunch of teams that played a lot of small ball, because I do think in a small ball lineup, he can be very effective, but I just don't think that he's a guy that's going to move the needle and, and frankly give them all of a sudden another eight, nine wins. That ain't going to happen. He gives yeah. them another option, which at this point, that's what I think Brad Stevens and, and Ime Yudoka are trying to build a team with lots of different options. Thank you.